It's a great pleasure to introduce the first speaker, uh, Maxim Konsevich, who is going to uh, tell us about global formulas for quantum cohomologies. Max? Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, it's first time we meet, we have Miami meeting, not in Miami, but online. Hope I hope it will be the last time. Yeah. Yeah. We all yeah. Hope. Yeah. And also, I, I just read just it's for American citizens that today is National Popcorn Day. So enjoy. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Yeah. Do you mean in France? No, no, in the United States. In the United States, it's National Popcorn Day today. Yesterday was Martin Luther King, and today is Popcorn Day. Okay. okay so I'll start. Popcorn. No, 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 it's today. Yeah, it's, it's, it's official. Okay, so I'll speak about uh, blow up formula and many of you already heard some uh, these things in some stage. And uh, actually I gave a talk as I presented one year ago, a program in a previous Miami meeting. Uh, so it's a, a little bit repeat and explain new developments. Yeah, so uh, 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 what is the general framework of quantum products? I will mm, work uh, mostly over complex numbers to be algebraic varieties, uh, but the things will be generalized. Uh, so we have a smooth connected complex quasi projective variety, no, uh, not projective, it could be, open, it could be a fine variety with an ample line bundle. So it will be open some variety in some projective guy, take pullback over O1 on the projective embedding. And uh, uh, the assumption which I'll ma make for this uh, variety, it will be uh, kind of the minimal amount of convexity to infinity, which usually people ask in symplectic geometry in order to have some kind of ground Witten series to be well defined. Uh, and this is the following. Uh, for any compact subset in X and for any homology class of future holomorphic curve of genus zero, in fact, there will be, uh, there exists a maybe larger uh, compact set K prime, such that for any uh, semi-stable map of genus zero, like tree of rational curves uh, with homology class beta and which touch, touches a smaller set K, uh, then this curve it automatically contains in a larger set set k prime. So if you fix kind of one point on a curve and come all the class, it cannot wander too far. Uh, so the sufficient condition, uh, uh, if you have, uh, there exists a proper morphism from your uh, uh, variety to a, an affine scheme, not, not necessarily smooth uh, to be. Uh, and it's a typical station JIT theory. If you consider some representation of quiver, some stability structure and curve has loops and consider semi stable uh, polystable objects. Uh, then you get, uh, if you are lucky, you have this will be smooth, you get such kind of varieties. Which, Maxim, finds, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, the curve C is not supposed to be compact, right? Or, or compact, no, 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 stable maps, it's a compact curve. Okay. Oh, sorry, compact semi stable. What is it's, it's a real mistake? Any semi stable map. Uh, forget forget the word compact, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, it's Thanks. automatically compact, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a little generalization of uh, um, respect to main case, which are projective varieties, which are compact one. Uh, so it would be slightly non compact one. Okay, so uh, if we have this, uh, this convexity infinity assumption, then we have a well defined Gromwitten witten invariance. Because I ask only for genus zero, it's kind of pure theoretical, uh, but uh, let's trick of genus zero. Oh, sorry, it was a really mistake. I also should put genus equal to zero here. Uh, namely, what I do, I consider model space of stable maps. It's a non-compact guy, in fact, because uh, if you consider like product of a fine variety and compact variety, it could be a curve which maps the point on a fine variety and not a point to actual curve. In in a projective factor. Yeah, but uh, uh, what we, we have evaluation maps and uh, we ask uh, for one, uh, if we evaluate uh, cohomology classes of my variety, which I denote by H, cohomology group of my variety, there are several 
and n minus one point when I will come logical, but on one point I will let plus with a compact support. And then because of my uh, convex infinity um, property, uh, when I fix one point to lie on a compact cycle, so that I rest on a compact uh, cycle here in, in a modular space, so the intervals will be well defined. And so I have this uh, Gromov Peter invariance when at, le at least one, or it's actually it's enough to have one of point, on one of point, I put cohomology with compact support. And cohomology with compact support is dual space of the cohomology by Poincare duality. So it means that we get not a um, polylinear functional cohomology, but polylinear map from, from cohomology to itself. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Mm -hmm. Let us choose a C-graded basis of cohomology contains uh, two classes, a uh, unit in H0 and first chain class of this my ample line bundle in H2 and defines a quantum product uh, in the following way. It will be by linear map from cohomology to cohomology, but with coefficients which are series in several variables. I'll explain in a second. It's a, everybody knows, but it can't still explain. Uh, namely, uh, how we define this uh, value of this map in pair with class and cohomology in cohomology with compact support. And pairing will be generating series uh, of uh, this Gromov Peter invariance in a kind of semi compact case. And you, as usual, uh, put arbitrary linear, uh, arbitrary many points and uh, put classes and some variables ti, uh, ta and also uh, uh, count the degree of the curve uh, take u to this non-negative integers at integral of a first chain class of a commodity class of curve so you get series in form power series in uh, q in ti, uh, ta okay yeah it's all clear and like like in a compact case you obtain commutative associative product on cohomology but price by, by the formal spectrum of this form power series ring uh, get coordinates in cohomology and it regions as super variables if cohomology are odd degrees and one extra variable q for, for degrees and then we define connection on a trivial bundle is favor h over what uh, we add one extra variable u, which will be not formal. And we consider polynomials of this, and connection will be meromorphic, as we will see. Namely, uh, uh, you have various uh, coordinates on your base uh, u, q, t, and uh, the covariant derivatives are given by such formulas. There are uh, 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 there are some operators k, a, and g, uh, which are matrices, uh, apparatus in H with coefficients in this form power series ring in Q and T. Uh, so, uh, operator k is a quantum product with a first chain class and uh, and a linear combination of other homology classes multiplied by two minus the degree. A alpha is quantum multiplication by d, d a, and for variable q, you uh, instead of d or dt, put q over d or dq, and put the special var variable which correspond to this first chain class by my assumption. And g is a gradient operator which is slightly shifted and divided by two. So on middle, cohomology gets zero. Now, so usual axiomatics of gromov newton theory implies that it's flat connection. And if you see from formula, because we have one over u and also q d d q, there are two hyperplanes, u equals zero and q equals zero, and this connection has poles. Okay. Yeah, so there are, uh, I ask uh, for my uh, basis to contain two special base vectors, which going to unit element and this class of ample line bundle. And there are really special variables. The first of all, the quantum product doesn't depend on a uh, variable, let's say T1, which correspond to unit. Uh, and so it means that this quantum product really doesn't depend on T1. 
and uh, the dependence on T2 and uh, can be compensated by dependence of Q. One can write something like Q DODQ minus DODT2. It will preserve the quantum product. So this variable T2 behaves like logarithm of this variable Q, which is responsible for degree. Okay. Now um, we have a, uh, this meromorphic flat connection over this big guy, but now we restrict to the base to something smaller, namely uh, in, in uh, uh, first we uh, forget about odd t coordinates, we consider only even coordinates, so it means that we treat an even cohomology, even degree cohomology part of x, and inside uh, even degree cohomology with rational coefficients has a rational subspace spent by classes of all closed algebraic varieties of all dimensions. Yeah, and uh, so we get the subspace, but as I told you, this variable T2 is kind of spurious because you have variable Q. Uh, we can choose a, also some graded com uh, complement to this uh, uh, line sp uh, spent by ample, ample class. Yeah, yeah. Ah, so what I, I told you is that you have um, this uh, uh, M algebraic. Uh, which is something which has dimensions the image of Cho group. Uh, and um, then we multiply by P1 and put some axiomatics that the bundle is trivial on P1, then the bundle will be trivial on HP1. And then if you look the, on this connection, if U goes to infinity in a variable T and Q, you get a trivial connection. So you get flat connection. As you identify fibers at infinity, and because it's over P1, they are trivial, so you identify fibers everywhere. Yeah, so it's a, 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 that's a rough picture. Some of differential geometry can formulate it some geometric terms, what is going on. And what are flat coordinates? Because uh, M algebraic, I said, it's spe formal spectrum of some compound series ring, but uh, actually flat coordinates one can extract from this abstract geometric structures that the kind of formal scheme and you know, smooth scheme, and you get element one, and from for this connection, you can extract flat coordinates. Okay. Mm. Now, uh, what are generalizations? One can uh, first uh, replace a manifold X by uh, Billin Mumford stack, uh, some kind of orbifold. And in this case, cohomology should replace by a string cohomology, which cohomology of the inertia stack, which has points in this orthomorphism. Uh, then uh, also one can put uh, some another twist, one can twist by torsion plus in the Brouwer group, giving a bundle of Fadzuma algebras. And then for me, it's a degree of curves would be multiplied by some roots of one. And mm, also this um, uh, integral of first chain class one, uh, over uh, commodity class of curve one can replace by arbitrary linear functional from second commodity to integers, which is non-negative from classes of rational curves. Uh, and then we need kind of finiteness conditions that whole sums should be finite. Uh, 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 coefficients of series should be finite sums. And uh, for this, you need that for any um, given degree, uh, step to this map, and for given pairing uh, uh, of my cohomology class curve with this first chain plus, there are only finitely many uh, versions of plus beta actually represented by rational curves. And sufficient condition is that it's a pairing with some cohomology class which is not strictly positive. It could be non-negative, so on the negative on any actual curve, and there exists a constant such that linear combination with first chain class is actually strictly positive. Maxim. Okay, uh, one can use a different uh, kind of polarization Maxime. or semi-polarization omega to start with, but it's, it, the whole story contains the same information. If you know for one omega, then you can get from another omega by some kind of recalculation. Okay, and there are some other things to deform a priori, uh, which are more serious. Uh, namely, one can, uh, uh, oh, actually less serious. One can add gravitational descendants. Uh, so we have cotangent, first chain plus of cotangent space of marked points put into the game. Uh, or we can add, uh, then the series will be infinitely many variables. Or we can add a multiplicative characteristic class of 
uh, the following thing. You fix some algebraic vector bundle on X, on your class in case theory. And then for, for universal stable map, map from semi-stable curve to X, you take R gamma of this vector, this bundle gets from certain vector bundle and take uh, class in P zero of model space of maps, apply the multiplicity to the class and put it into the integral. But all the things, adding gravitational descendants and multiplicity to the class can be again reduced, recalculated through uh, kind of simplest wrong between invariance which you start with. It's called quotes given type formalism. Uh, is your genus is still zero? Z zero, yeah, I never go to high genus at all. In my okay. yeah, it's, it's really simplified a lot. And finally, this ground pigeon theory can be formulated for algebraic varieties of arbitrary field of characteristic zero. And it seems to be also be okay in, in, in the case of positive characteristic, but I uh, do not develop into this. So if my variety is over field of characteristic zero, so we can kind of completely safely assume that it's subfield of complex numbers, choose some kill unnecessary transcendence degree and embedding complex numbers. And then uh, I, I, I can define two rational vector space for this maybe non-compact variety X. It, uh, one will be algebraic part of cohomology, namely what I do, I consider mm, uh, beta cohomology of X with respect to my embedding. So it means it's just consider complex points and consider cohomology with the rational coefficients and consider rational subspace spans by all classes of all closed sub varieties defined over K. So I get some infinite, finite dimensional, even vector space over Q, no super vector space around. So we get some just vector space. In fact, it's a graded space, graded by algebraic dimension. Yeah, so get this algebraic part of cohomology, which depend to uh, then choose this embedding on complex numbers and similar stack for endomorphism, consider cycles in the square which are proper on the first, fa on the first factor, consider what maps in cohomology are induced. Get just this usual finite dimension algebra, also add to, consider algebra generated by gradient operator and the rest what you need. And uh, uh, this uh, first space is a module of this algebra. And by comparison, isomorphism, the things really don't depend on choice of embedding. Uh, because we get the same notion of cohomological equivalence, independent on embedding compared with Italian cohomology. Yeah, so for abstract variety over abstract field and could 60 zero, we get just vector space, algebra, and containing a gradient operator. Every single fine dimension, and then one can formulate the whole story for Gram Pitton invariance exactly uh, only in these terms, nothing else you will need. Mm, okay. Now, uh, now my operator uh, mm, K is an even orthomorphism and uh, an endomorphism of super vector space, traced by formal poly disk. And then one can sp speak about spectrum of separator, it's generic point. Uh, you get uh, maybe a field of fractions on, on this form of disk. Uh, so you get finite subset in algebraic closure of field of fractions. And uh, so the goal of my lecture is to formulate some conjectures which uh, concern this quantum spectrum and its behavior under blow ups. And particular number of elements in the spectrum should be additive in appropriate sense uh, and giving a motivic measure. Uh, and in the next lecture, I'll speak about uh, something else, it's uh, um, dimension. And it, uh, and it will give a new criterion for non-rationality and uh, in kind of arbitrary dimension. Last year, it was only in dimension, small dimensions, two, three, four. Uh, it seems to go in any dimensions, and it seems that its criterion is very close to what really happens in a uh, case which we know. So, it's, so Lindmill will give many, many examples, illustrate how with this invariance one can detect rationality or not. Yeah. Uh, now, first, there is a very optimistic conjecture, which uh, we'll just increase a little bit. Uh, for which I don't have really solid evidence and which is completely out of reach, which 
uh, actually very old conjecture. Uh, uh, and uh, in order to simplify uh, exposition, let's assume that quantum connection given by a convergent series. Uh, let you see it's not relevant. Oh, I just want to check. Are you around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. I'm, I'm very afraid of disappearing. Yeah, uh, the conjecture is that if you take uh, any point, uh, general, not general, uh, and choose, uh, then you get eigenvalues will be just complex numbers, not. Mm, mm, uh, here, I mean, the domain of convergence, it get a collection of complex numbers and choose the joint pass from minus infinity to these numbers. It's called Gabriel pass. It's, uh, the choice is not unique, it's a torso or red group. And if we make a choice, we obtain a semi orthogonal decomposition of derived Cartier coherent shifts into pieces which exactly correspond to these points of the spectrum. Uh, yeah, and if it's uh, kind of more complicated uh, variety, uh, things not or default and with a job, you would define uh, what the replicate your coherent shifts and appropriate way should be coherent shifts on a stack and this also maybe it's modulus of Azuma algebra if it's a job. Okay, uh, if X is very compact uh, projective, then all categories should be uh, saturated, smooth and proper, and equal to local Foucault saddle categories for the mirror dual if it exists. We don't know in, in general, does mirror exist or not, it's pretty theoretical. But in general, uh, if it's not, variety is not compact, but hardly compact, I expect that it will be uh, like category here shifts on smooth varieties. So they'll be of finite type and homologically smooth. Yeah. Yeah, so, so this number of points in the spectrum, it's uh, kind of obvious things. It's a generic point, it's the maximal possible number. And then it will be discriminant when they have less uh, points in the spectrum. And similar orthogonal decompositions will be have less elements uh, relative to the generic case. And the spe in this spectral decomposition, when we have several uh, points of the spe spectrum uh, collide to one, then the corresponding subcategories so it should be combined into one larger separate subcategory. And uh, in this uh, picture, you see that categories are not phantoms. We cannot never see phantoms because we uh, mm, uh, kind of label categories by eigenspaces of something like in cohomology. So cohomology, because a piece of cohomology is not zero. And piece of cohomology is something like Hochschild cohomology. It's a vector space of a field of characteristic zero. And this Hochschild cohomology category are not vanishing. Yeah, how uh, to do the things without convergence? Yeah, one can, uh, uh, instead of complex numbers, consider piece of series in some auxiliary variable, which you can see is a very, very small positive number. So you can see, you can again, when it's kind of like moving complex numbers and then up to isotopia, the notion of a collection of Gabriel of paths is well-defined. So it will be completely okay. Yeah, so it's very, very optimistic conjecture, and, uh, but you have no idea how to even approach it. But I, I, I'll use it as kind of like yoga and try to extract some colors which will be more accessible. Yeah, so uh, the main uh, uh, question which I'll address, what is the behavior of this uh, spectra and so on under blow-ups? Uh, so let's take a smooth closed sub-variety. Again, X and Y could be non-compact, doesn't matter. Uh, the, so variety will be of pure co-dimension M, greater than two, and uh, we have a blow up by pi from X tilde to X. It's again smooth variety. And uh, there are following basic facts. If X was kind of good at infinity, no curves uh, escape if you pinch them at one point, then the same true is for some variety, it's obvious, and also for blow up. It's also pretty obvious because my price is proper. Okay, then uh, if you have uh, also, we need uh, uh, in, in the whole story, we need existence of ample class, it's, it's completely for free. If my X uh, had some ample class omega, then if you stick to Y, it's obviously ample. Uh, 
yeah, but uh, if you take pullback tracks still there, uh, the obvious candidate, it will be not uh, necessarily ample, it will be just non negative. But for sufficiently small rational number epsilon, if you add first chunk class, then you get a, a gain strictly positive ample class on x tilde. So, so it means that both varieties x, y, and x tilde uh, are in the same class which we are working with. So they are quasi projective and convex at infinity. Yeah, but uh, now what happens with cohomology? It's well known that if you consider cohomology of x tilde as z2 graded case space, then the same cohomology of x and sum of m minus one copies of cohomology of y. Uh, because, and the same goes from algebraic cycles. Algebraic cycles uh, we have additive, in particular, dimension of modular space. Uh, this algebraic part of my Frobenius manifolds for x tilde is this also behave in additive way. And derived category of coherent shifts also uh, of the um, varieties um, has a semi orthogonal decomposition by Orlov theorem. Okay, so those are these basic facts. Now, uh, what is suggest? Because what, 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 the picture was that uh, uh, we have certain deformation, uh, some model, is, uh, some this formal, maybe Frobenius manifold, uh, deforming uh, quantum products and, and giving a splitting of uh, derived categories of X and Y and maybe X tilde. And it looks at uh, what goes on that uh, when you uh, de uh, deform quantum products in X tilde and consider what will be this uh, eigenvalues and uh, uh, elementary pieces and uh, semi-trouble decomposition. What you have, you get mm. kind of independently, uh, you deform a, a, a quantum products X and M minus times independently deform quantum products on Y. And uh, the picture is that um, if you start um, with this, uh, uh, appropriate class on X tilde, very cl close to pullback of class on X, then what you see the spectrum will be uh, really uh, mm. splitted eigenvalues from X uh, and surrounded by almost a regular M minus one gone of shifted copies of spectrum of Y. Yeah, so I, uh, last year I already talked on, on it and there are notes. Uh, this kind of good handwriting, and uh, but um, I, I, here I go explained in terms of Fourier transform, and uh, I'll try just give kind of briefer formulation without Fourier transform. Now, so so this my semi ample classes I repeat will be uh, the following: omega on X ample class on X, on Y I have pullback, and on X I take also pullback, which is semi positive, but it's okay for Genetic series. So the, uh, now uh, for the sex tilde, uh, if you use this semi ample class, the operator, when you put all variable q equal to zero, t equal to zero, it's very easy to calculate. What we count here only rational curves which map to a point in X. So to be rational curves in projective spaces, uh, fibers will blow up over Y. And then it's very easy to calculate what is going on. It's almost classical geometry, and the spectrum will be zero and rescaled roots of one. It's exactly like in the previous picture when kind of green points collapse to one point and blue points also collapse to one point. And, uh, and in this limiting case, when you get meromorphic connection, uh, uh, first you uh, over form power series in. Uh, variable u, you can identify with sum of connections of a, mm. uh, I think it's not all form process, I think it's actually even all polynomials can be identified with sum of connect connections is pointing to mm. you know, various spectra. And then each summand can be identified again all form power series uh, with classical limit of connections for x and y. We use only classical product with a, uh, First chain class. And uh, okay, so so I just want to check. Are you still around? 
Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so what uh, what goes on? We have this uh, uh, family of uh, connections in one variable, depending on matches k and g. G is uh, keep constant, but k varies. And uh, how to understand this connection? It's a meromorphic connection, which has second order pole at u equals zero and first order pole at u equals infinity. And uh, so that one considers the connection second order pole of a form power series in new u and connection first order pole on a fine line with inverse coordinate and glued along certain modification uh, along uh, the spectrum of Lorentz series. And we glue in such a way that the resulting super vector bundle is trivial. Uh, when the resulting vector bundle is trivial, uh, then automatically my connection will have uh, Trivial bundle because the condition that has second order pole at zero and first order pole at infinity uh, in uh, expansion uh, in trivialization of this condition have only two terms k and g. Yeah, that's uh, encode these things geometrically. And now we have isomorphic deformations uh, uh, of uh, of this connection for classical limit. For my variety x or for variety y, and then we, uh, because uh, it's the classical limit, we get this identification. We can glue one to another and see that uh, if we deform uh, 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 connection of x and many times connections of y, you get connections mm. deformed over huge uh, some variety, uh, and the rank will be. Uh, some of ranks and one oh it's kind of one can go backwards and then one gets certain map between uh formal schemes going actually in the opposite direction so it means uh, so uh, the rough idea is that if you really deform this picture uh in your x tilde then you can locally see what's going on around zero and around each scale root of one and uh, uh, see it's like points in uh, as a more model spaces. Uh, and then we get certain uh, uh, map. And the conjecture is a pullback, uh, the pullback by this map uh, of the whole structure will be the same as you get for, for Gromkin variance of X tilde. Yeah, so it's a bit unexplicit, it's, uh, but uh, one can unwind it. It will be like step by step. Uh, you can reconstruct. Uh, coefficients of this my series, and um, uh, what we see is that uh, what it says it's in some some complicated ways the quantum uh, coefficients of quantum products of X tilde will be expressed through coefficients of quantum products x y and some cl uh, classical data restriction morphism cup products and Cartesian classes of a normal bundle to y and maybe some tangent bundles. Yeah, yeah. So it's a pretty uh, messy thing, but uh, algorithmic. It's still not proven. I uh, not not refuted, and I'll uh, explain in in uh, last few slides a strategy which I hope can work. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, so the main thing uh, uh, here is the following: uh, this kind of genus zero group invariance of X still can be reconstructed from those of X and Y. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, I will try to prove first that it really can be canonically determined by X and Y and classical data. And then the blow up conjecture will be some kind of formal identity. If uh, then we kind of uh, encode to some algebraic machinery, uh, and then we'll try to see why it's true. Uh, so, yeah, so, the, so the, it's really basic question why you can reconstruct chlorophyll and variance of X tilde. So there are many, many people who worked on it. And it's still not settled, this question. Uh, it's, one can ask him questions in simple electric geometry. Uh, so uh, what's the approach which I suggest is the following. Yeah, so I just want to check, are you still around? Yes. Oh, good, okay, yeah. Were, yeah so, uh... Okay, yeah, yeah so, uh, so what's the main idea? Uh, I do uh, the following. 
uh, trick. I multiply my variety x by projective line. Is it some new coordinate t, which has nothing to do with u and which you had before? Uh, then uh, it contains x cross zero, a uh, copy of x over zero, and then it contains some variety y over zero, and I take blow up of the total space. It still gets some smooth, let's say, compact variety, x hat. Because uh, uh, on this x cross p1, this action of rescaling of, of variable t, and it preserves y cross zero. It's also acts on the, on the blow up by naturalness. So we get a C star action or JM action on X head. And what are fixed points of this action? The fixed points are very simple. You get uh, at inf X at infinity. And at z over zero, we get a kind of two components. You get X tilde, blow up of X is center of Y and Y. Yeah, so I draw a little picture. Uh, so here you see uh, your uh, fixed points. Uh, this kind of brown arrows are direction of C star action. Uh, so X tilde was kind of expanding, X is att attracting, and Y you get uh, many contracting components and one expanding uh, uh, direction. Yeah, and it projects the projective line. Okay, so it's very simple. Uh, yeah, but the nice thing is it's, it's, it's fixed points. You have the three uh, objects which we play with, x, y, and x tilde. Now consider genus zero curves in x tilde, which are vertical. So when you compose with the projection to P1, you get a point. So homology classes of this vertical curves, one can analyze a, a label by homology class in x and some integer positive or negative. Okay, so we have this uh, vertical curves. And now what we do now, uh, we can see the model space of mm. stable maps to X tilde with this class beta head. There is still C star action. So we get compact uh, whatever derived uh, stack with virtual fundamental class, we get C star action. And uh, now one can try to integrate uh, over this guy, one can uh, use both formula and reduce the integration of fixed points. And what are fixed points in the spotless space of uh, uh, maps to the sex head? Uh, uh, each non trivial component should be either mapped to fixed points or should be orbit of uh, this uh, cis direction. But the orbits of cis directions. All of them projects to non-trivial orbit except the tiny orbits which connect x tilde and y. So what we, what we see is that fixed points are kind of uh, either uh, curves which sits entirely in a uh, right hand side and x cross infinity, or there are trees of curves in. Uh, there are curves, there are components which sits in X tilde, there are components which sit in Y, which cannot see in the picture because Y is zero dimensional one for my picture. And they're joined by cyclic curves of orbits of these directions connecting points on X tilde and Y. Now, so one can draw a kind of typical example of a curve with marked points. It has different mm. uh, components. Mm. So those will be it's altogether form a tree. There are some curves on X tilde, some curves on Y, then connect by uh, orbits of C star action, or maybe some cyclic covers of orbits of C star actions. And there'll be some marked points. And uh, just through the marked points, it draws those dashed lines. Yeah, so you get mm, uh, something. One can work with this. It's not terribly complicated, but pretty heavy. And what is the idea? Mm -hmm. Uh, we have this uh, uh, fixed uh, loss uh, labeled by tree, and by both formula, we take uh, equivariant integral, and the total things should have should have no um, negative powers of equivariant parameter because that should be some should be some polynomials and equivariant parameters plus some homology of CP infinity, uh, and when calculating individual trees, you get a lot of negative powers of covariant parameters. And 
the whole thing will be some combinations of integrals of modulus space of curves in x tilde y and the stupid um, p1 orbits. Yeah, here one can start to use given types formalism, given type quotes formalism, uh, because there will be some normal bundles appear, some churn classes, multiple characteristic classes, and so on. But uh, yeah, in principle, it's doable, it's pretty heavy and gives infinite bunch of identities. And uh, we worked a little bit with Ludmil uh, this last year. Uh, and uh, there was some good progress. And uh, I think we passed through some kind of barrier uh, of non uh, get some non-trivial result. And it looks that it's identity there are enough identities to reconstruct group generators of X tilde uniquely with all this uh, business. And then it eventually will lead to algebraic, so algebraic machinery, which eventually we hope to prove this blow up formula. Okay, thank you. All right, let's thank Maxim. So I believe Daniel has the slides in the chats now. In the chat now. So any questions? Yes, yeah, sort of a general question about your general conjecture. I mean, maybe it's too good. If I do. You mean, the, you mean about. <clears throat> Yeah, the, the way the way, uh, the conjecture, the, the one which the, there is no kind of approach. approach yeah, 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 yeah. If, yeah. If you if you kind of formally do the Fourier transform to to the quantum connection, yeah. uh, uh, you, you you kind of you, you get a, a regular uh, singularities, and so uh, is there? I mean, did you? Anybody tried to, to think about categorification, like what's a perverse shopper which uh, categorifies uh, the sheaf of solutions? Yeah, actually, for uh, the stories, uh, ah, mm, try to think. Yeah, but describe Schober and to, to have the symmetric multiplication. The same yeah, with, without having the Landau Ginsburg. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, no, no, in general, it's it could be even wrong, I think, this conjecture. Yeah. But I'm maybe too pessimistic. Mm. Other questions? Uh, is uh, this I, I have a... going to be a continuation of this one? Sorry? Is your second talk? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Because I told it, it will be uh, interact with this, this talk, yeah. yeah. Uh, Maybe you will send slides. Start. I, I, I will send slides here in the, <laughs> in the meantime, yeah. All right. So we will proceed in uh, 30 minutes with the second talk by Maxine. See you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.